Okay, so welcome back to another tutorial. And you can see here, this is this sort of conveyor belt physics simulation thing. I thought it's just really satisfying to see it. You can see here, this is the blend file of my original. And today in this tutorial, I'm gonna be taking you guys through the process of making it. It's actually really simple. This isn't an absolute beginner tutorial. You need to know a thing or two about Blender, but this is still pretty beginner friendly. So um, the steps in here are not complicated at all. Just make sure you know at least the basics of navigation and stuff. But um, this is what we're gonna be making. And I'm gonna even show you where you can get some cool free materials. And um, yeah, let's jump right into it. And as always, the blend file will be on Patreon. So open up a new scene in Blender. I'm gonna be using a Blender 3.2 for this tutorial. And uh, we've got a default cube here. Um, we're gonna do for now, let's just delete the default cube and let's go shift A, let's go to measure options, let's add in a cylinder. And with the cylinder here, uh, let's just tab into edit mode and with all of this active, we're gonna go R, X, nine, zero, and we're gonna press enter. So we've rotated all of this topology 90 degrees on the X axis. And now we're gonna go S, Y, and we're gonna type in two. So we've scaled it two times along its Y axis or the global Y, as you can see here. We're gonna tab back out into object mode. And one of the reasons I did that, just in case you guys were wondering, um, if I did this inside of um, object mode, like if I rotated it or scaled it, I'd have to apply the rotation and the scale, especially if we're gonna be dealing with physics simulations. So just doing it in edit mode, it's just a bit more efficient. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna grab this and we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate it, right click to let go. Then tab into edit mode with that new um, duplication. And we're gonna go S, Y and we're gonna scale it down on the Y again. And now this can be as thick as you want your conveyor belt to be. So I'm gonna go about something like this. Then I'm gonna go into my front orthographic view. I'm gonna go into wireframe mode and I'm just gonna click and drag, select half of these verts and then go X and delete them. So we now only have half of this drum here. With all of these um, active, I'm gonna go Alt S and I'm just gonna lightly scale them out along the normals, just a little bit. So they're not completely intersecting with this drum here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate this. And we're gonna go X to constrain it to the X. And let's just move it over some amount. And then in our front orthographic view, we're gonna go R and we're gonna go 180 in our front orthographic view. And that should be rotated perfectly like that. Then all we have to do is we have to um, zoom out a little bit. And at the moment, um, look at these these um, squares here, right? In fact, let's just do this with a number. Let's just go G, X, and let's just move it till it's touching half of that circle again here. And we're gonna go G, X, and let's type in 12 and press enter, okay? Okay, maybe that is a little bit too far. So I'm gonna go G to move and then X, and I'm gonna type in eight and then press enter. So I think eight is a good number. We've moved it up eight meters from where the other half is, like so. So now we have a more precise number. Now let's go over to our edge select. Let's select this edge here, holding in select this one and then press F to fill it. And then do the same thing here. Select these two edges and then press F to fill them in. And now what we can do is we can go Control R on the top here. You're gonna see the yellow line, just left click and then right click to let go and then come over here to the loop cut slide and then you can type in something like 25, right? And what we're gonna do here, it doesn't have to be precise, but we want this to have a value. So whatever the width of these segments are here between the edges on the cylinder is roughly the same over here. So I can see 32 might be a better number. Um, still not quite there, let's go with 38. Okay, oh, I typed in 28, I'm gonna type in 38. Okay, so 38 for a meter of eight for a distance of eight meters on the X that we moved that other half, that looks about right. So let's do the same at the bottom. We're gonna go Control R at the bottom, left click, then right click, and let's type in here the exact same value. So we're dealing with something that's even. So now we have the right amount of cuts. Let's tab back out. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna quickly select our drum here. We're gonna go Shift D. We're gonna tab into edit mode and let's quickly go to our face select option here. Let's select this face here, holding in shift, select this face here. Let's go control B to create a bevel and then roll the middle mouse button once to add in a segment. And then let's come over here to our vertex option and in our front orthographic view, let's just go K. If you press the K tool, you can cut. So we're gonna click here, then click here, enter. 
press K again and then click here and then click on this vertex and then press enter. So I've just gone from the two vertexes from the middle here and the same at the bottom. We're then gonna go and click on the face, select this face, then go E to extrude a little bit and then go E to extrude again. And then we're gonna go tab out. We're gonna right click and we're gonna go shade smooth. And let's just give that a bevel modifier. And then modifiers and let's give it some more segments. And um, yeah, that's that looks okay. Okay, we don't want to go too much. We, we don't need to add a subdivision surface here. We just want it to be um, relatively low poly. You can just mess around with this amount here till things look a little bit better. But you get the idea here. The reason we have this here, if we rotate it on the Y eventually, we can actually see it rotating a little bit better with that detail. So now we have that done. We're going to go Shift D, X and duplicate a drum. And let's just move it over to this end, but not all the way. Let's just move it almost something like that. Right, so we got a little bit of play here. So we get a little bit of slack in our um, conveyor belt here, which is something we want to, um, just a little bit of sl slack, it just looks better. And then let's just also select the conveyor belt itself. Let's right click and go shade smooth. And also let's just give it a bit more topology. You don't have to, but I think having some more topology can help with the shading when we add a solidify modifier. So we're gonna go control R and we're just gonna left click and then right click. And let's just come here to the segments. Let's give it four. And with these four segments still selected, let's go S, Y, and let's scale it on the Y a little bit like that. Tab back out and now we have that sorted. So let's just actually animate these drums first before we give physics or physic properties to our um, band here that's gonna be conveying on these drums. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select both of these drums by holding in shift, selecting them both, and let's come here to our timeline. And let's come to frame 40, because we don't wanna start straight away. And in frame 40, we're gonna go I, and we're gonna insert a rotation keyframe. Now let's just quickly press N on our keyboard, and we have our properties here. Let's go to item. Under the transforms, we can see here we've added a keyframe to these X, Y, and Z um, locations for the rotation here. I mean the, the vectors here. So on 40, we're gonna grab the slider, we're gonna drag it up and let's go to about, let's say 160. And 160, we're gonna to come to this Y value with both of them still selected. We're gonna go 1,300. Let's just try that for now. And at the moment, it actually did it to the main active one. So what I'm gonna do is hovering over here, I'm just gonna press I and insert it to insert the keyframe. You can see here it is on the rotation. Then I'm gonna select this one and I'm still on 160. I'm just gonna come here, type in 1300. And then I'm gonna press I as well. So both of them now have that value. And if you now go to frame zero and hit the space bar and you can see at 40, it starts running like that. And it starts slow and then um, speeds up and then slows down again, which is what we want. We want that Bezier curve on the animation. Let's come to the end frame value and make it um, 180, okay? So cool, now what we can do is we can select this um, band here and let's go to our physics. Let's give that a cloth and let's select both these drums and give them both a collision. Now let's go to frame one, press the space bar and have a look at that. How cool is that? Pretty easy, hey? And we didn't have to do much as far as settings go. Um, the one more thing we can do to make this really cool and by the way, you can actually, let's just quickly select this band. Let's just give it a temporary material. Just go new. And let's just go down to the viewport display and make it any color. It really is just so we can see what we are doing. Okay. And let's just quickly create another color material. Once again, this is completely temporary. Let's just tab into edit mode and just shift alt. Click on a edge on a face. Just loop select them. A whole bunch in a row. Give it that new material. Now we have a little line. You can make it whatever color you want. All we want to see here is simply when we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we want to see what happens here. Okay, let's have a look. So we can see here the drum is going faster than the actual um, belt is turning. There's uh, not enough friction. So let's just select this drum and let's just go over to our physics settings. Let's go over to the collision Let's just go over to the friction and make it a higher value. And let's do the same for this one here. Okay, so let's go to frame one, hit the space bar. Okay, that's a little bit better. But what we're gonna do now 
is we're actually gonna take this drum, we're gonna animate it a little bit to pull a little bit tighter. So let's go shift A, let's just add in an empty, add in a cube, and it'll be right over here. Let's take this drum, holding in shift, let's select that empty and go control P, and go object, keep transform. Now if we grab this empty, we can animate it regardless of the animation that's on this one here. So what we're gonna do is go to frame one, hit the space bar, and we know at frame 40, it starts turning. So let's come to frame 40 here with this, or maybe even frame 30. In frame 30 here, we're gonna go with this empty, we're gonna go I, insert a location, and let's come to frame 80, and on frame 80, we're gonna go G, Z, and let's move it up a little bit. Let's go I and insert a location. Let's go to frame one, hit the space part to run the simulation, and let's have a look at that. Okay, so we wanted to pull tight a little bit, right? So let's go back to frame 80. In frame 80, we're gonna go G, just move it out a little bit, go I, insert a location again. Go to frame one, hit the space bar just to rerun the simulation. And now it's pulling a little bit tighter, which is what we want. You can see now it's not slipping as much. And that is looking really cool. And this is very satisfying. Something about seeing this is really cool, right? And if we go into wireframe, we can see here, we're not seeing too much slipping here on the drum. There's a little bit, but this is looking pretty cool. I might just come here and come down to frame 120 over here and then go G, pull it down this way and a little bit tighter and go I, insert a location. Go to frame one, hit the space bar. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. So once you're happy with that, you can now grab this and you can actually go to your modifiers, give it a solidify to give it a little bit of thickness like that. And um, yeah, you can also select this conveyor belt. You can go over to your physics and under the cloth, you can go to the cache. Let's make it 180 because that's our frames. And we only have, have to have it starting at frame one. So let's just leave it at that. And let's go bake. And now it's gonna bake this into our scene. So now even if we were to you know, move this while this is running, the animation, um, it's not gonna do anything because this is baked in. So if you wanna redo that, you have to delete the bake and run it again, but you get the idea here. So now let's go add in a plane. We're gonna go Shift A, add in a mesh plane. S to scale it up nice and big. And then go G, Z, move it down just a little bit. Control A and apply to scale. And then let's grab our camera, go into camera view, and then let's just rotate our camera, move it over here, zoom it out a little bit. And let's go to our focal length and make it 140. And let's go G, middle mouse button, while we're in camera view, let's zoom that camera out a little bit. And I'm just gonna double tap R to rotate it. I want a nice high view like this. And let's see what it looks like if we get all of that in the camera view. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, let's now go to our render settings. Let's make this cycles. Um, if you have a GPU, enable that. If you don't, just leave it at CPU. Now let's go to our render settings here. Let's make the max samples 100, because we're gonna be rendering each frame a cycle, so don't have to make that too high, and make sure denoising is enabled. And now what we can do is we can go to our world settings. Let's just go to our color here, let's just give it a sky texture. And now if we press Z and go rendered, let's just go control B and drag over our camera, just to limit our render to the camera view here. And let's go to under our world settings here still, let's just go to the strength and make it 0.4 for now. And let's grab this light here, get rid of it. And let's go shift A, let's add in an area light move it up, rotate it in like so. Let's go to our light settings. Let's make it 170 on the strength and let's increase that size. Now if we go Z and go rendered, let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. So now what you could do is you could select the floor, the plane here, and you can go give that a new material. You can make it a bit darker so everything stands out. And then you can select the actual drums here, give them a material and a conveyor belt. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use pre-existing materials 
that I got for free online. I'm gonna put a link to these in the description below so you can download them on Polyhaven. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go File, I'm gonna go Append, and I'm just gonna to go to where I keep those. So the first one is gonna be a coarse Rust. I'm just gonna get that blend file. Once again, these will be in the um, link, links in the description below. And then just go to the material and then import that material. Now if I go Z, rendered, and I select these drums, I can go down to the drop down, and I can see there it is, the rusty, the coarse rust. And now I can select the other drum, come to the drop down, and give it that same material. I can also select the conveyor belt, get rid of those two materials, and then go down, give that, that rust um, material that we imported. But just click here on this number three, and this is called this belt. Now it's its own material, we can simply go to our shading workspace, Z, go rendered, and let's come up here to the base color and go shift A, search, get a color ramp and place it here between the base color and the principled. Drag this value in here and now we can make it something like a nice blue. Drag it in a bit. And we can also, and this is what I did with my original, I clicked on a plus here, I went to the drop down, gave it that belt material. And then I clicked on a little number again, and now I've made another version of that. And I went into edit mode, and I just selected these edges here, and I assigned that. And then I came here with that new material, and I changed the color to a nice yellow, like so. And that worked really well. And then I selected my floor, and I'm gonna to go to file, I'm gonna go append, and once again, I'll put a link to this in the description below. It's free to download. I'm gonna get the metal plate, I'm gonna to go to that blend file, and I'm gonna to go to the material and import that metal plate. Then go to the drop down with that floor selected and get that metal plate. Then in this node setup here, I'm just gonna to go to the scale and change it all to something of a different scale, maybe something like eight on the X, Y, and Z. And that is about what I did for my original. So um, go to your world settings. You can actually change the rotation of the sun and that's what I did, just so it looks a little bit nicer. And you can also uh, mess around with the strength and position of the light. I might tone that down just a bit. And under the world, I might make it just a little bit darker. Let's make it 0.2. And I might just duplicate this light here. Rotate it in. Maybe increase the strength of one of them. I still think maybe the, the world lighting is a bit too much. I'm going to go 0.05. So we rely more just on these lights here. I'm gonna increase the strength up quite a bit. And because it's quite a large scene here, I might bump it up even more. Just try whatever you guys think looks nice. And let's go Shift A, let's just add in some point lights and move them behind here. And having that in the scene behind an object can really help it stand out. So I'm gonna increase the strength for that, increase the radius, and I'm just gonna place them kind of at the edges behind this, these objects we've created just to kind of help them pop out a little bit. I might just grab that grid floor and just add in a color ramp for that metal grid just to make it a little bit darker. I think that just looks a little bit better and I'm also just gonna make it metallic as well. And the same with the drums here. I'm just gonna take that and give it a metallic value. And you can do the same here with the belt material that we created. And now I'm just messing around again with my um, environment light. And you guys can mess around with the textures and stuff all you want, but what you wanna do as well, is you can add in another empty, place it somewhere to the front here, and then select your camera, and then go to your camera settings, and then go to depth of field, click on a little eyedropper, select that, and then drag this focal length way down. So now we have a nice soft focus in the background. Maybe bring it down a bit. You guys get the idea here. Make sure to save as you go, and if you wanna render this out, go to your output, select your folder, select an area on your computer, I'm gonna use my desktop, and then the file format, make that an FFmpeg video. And then under the encoding, you can go and make that an MP4. And then just go render and render out your animation. So this is kind of a basic 
tutorial breakdown of how I did my original. I'll be putting my original one on Patreon, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. See what you can do with this, have some fun, and I'll see you guys for another tutorial.